Now let's take a closer look at Frame.io version 3.5 with Sam. Cinema 5D at IBC 2019 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Lawa, unique cinema and photography lenses. Gudson, capture the world. And Fujinon, ultimate optical performance. Hi, this is Nino from Cinema 5D. We're here at IBC 2019 with Frame.io. Hi, Sam, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Nice to meet you, Nino. Thanks nice, for having me. Nice to meet you, too. Yep. Um, so you just released uh, Frame.io release 3.5. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, I think we reported about it. Uh, but it'd be nice to get a run-through of the new features. Yeah, great. I'll give you a quick rundown of, of what just went live. Uh, so the first is range-based comments. Uh, and I'll jump into the player to show you what that looks like. Uh, and as you know, in the past with Frame.io, we've always had these frame-specific comments. Uh, and we've had customers asking us for a long time to allow you to comment on entire ranges. Uh, so I would just click play here. Um, and let's say I want to take out this clip here. Caps lock on, so this will be extra loud. <laughs> uh, but you can see when I'm leaving that comment, uh, you see this new kind of range selector as you're leaving the comment. So I can just come in and just drag that out. And one of the cool things that we've introduced as part of this as well is uh, precision scrubbing. So if I hold down shift, I can actually go frame by frame and find that exact moment that I want uh, to take out. Uh, and you can go back the other direction as well. And again, you have precision scrubbing there as, as well. Um, so once I take that out, and just say enter. I have that range. Uh, if I have the range selected, I can loop through the range and make sure that uh, I'm just continuing to see that. And when I'm ready to, to leave it and just move on to the next one, uh, I can just click here, press escape. Uh, so that's range-based comments. If I click into it, you just see it right in the comment panel and you can see uh, the range that I've selected. Uh, and this is also live on iOS. Uh, on our Adobe Premiere panel on Final Cut Pro. Um, so all the places that you're used to using Frame.io, you'll see these range-based comments come in. You can import them into your sequence or timeline as markers, uh, that sort of thing. So that's range-based comments. Uh, the next piece that we've introduced is uh, advanced search and filter. So in the past, we always had uh, jump to search, and that'll just quickly take you to uh, an asset or a project that you're looking for. Uh, but we've also introduced search and filter. So uh, let's say I have a bunch of assets in my project. I can now filter to only show me items from a specific project. So let's go to Roads End Film, which is the project we were just working on. Uh, and then maybe I just want to see items uh, that have been approved. I can click in there, and I see my approved assets for that. Or maybe I want to see everything that uh, has been uploaded in the last, let's say, in the last week. I can do that as well. Um, so just a, a more customizable, flexible way to look at all the assets that you have uh, in your Frame.io account. Uh, so a pretty big step forward in terms of discoverability and how you're able to find uh, your content in Frame.io. Especially when you have bigger teams working on projects, I guess. Exactly, yeah. So uh, if you are an account or an organization that uses multiple teams in Frame.io, um, you can actually even filter by team. So if I come in here, uh, let's actually just say, I'll take out some of these filters, and I'll just go to team, scrolling the wrong way. Uh, and so maybe I just want to see everything in this Airbnb demo team, right? Um, so in the past, it's been, let me jump into a project and look around there. This is the first time you've ever had that full window across everything that your account or your team uh, or any projects are working on. And uh, we think it'll be pretty powerful for seeing you know, what needs review, what's been approved, that sort of thing. Mm. And then the last thing that we've just introduced into beta, uh, we're calling secure sharing. So uh, in the past, when you're sharing content in either a review link or a presentation page, uh, you've been sharing them in these public links. And you can put a pass word in front of them, or you can have expiration dates on those things. Um, 
what's cool in this latest release is we've actually added in this new invite only option. Um, if I click on that, I can still see the public sharing that's been available in the past, or I can disable the link outright. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have invite only enabled, I can invite people to this. Uh, they'll get an email from Frame.io just as they would in the past. So a little bit like Google Drive. Yeah, kind of like Google yeah. Drive. So uh, if I invite this user, in this case it's demo1 plus inbox, yeah. uh, they'll get that email, but they're going to have to actually log in to Frame.io okay. to access that content. So Or register. Uh, yeah, they'll have to they'll have to sign into yeah. the into the product. So. But is it it has to be like a paid account or is it, if it's just somebody who's like you know a client? It's it's someone that's part of your account, so they'll be a reviewer. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, they'll they'll log in, and if you have those projects or you're, if you're part of an organization that's working with tier zero content, things that you know need that extra layer of security, um, then this is a nice option for you. Um, so I'll just say you know latest cut needs review up here. You can add a little message, say ASAP, mm -hmm. send that over. And then for that user, we've also uh, introduced this new idea of inbox. So these users are going to be logging into Frame.io, but they might not have access to your teams and your mm -hmm. projects and things like that. Uh, so now, if that user logs in, they just see this nice, clean inbox, uh, and they can jump in and, and view that content uh, as they normally would, right? So uh, just a little bit of, a, of an easier way to find, here's everything that I need to review right now. Here's everything that people have sent to me uh, since I last logged into Frame.io. And of course, we'll support that across iOS, uh, where our Apple Design award-winning app uh, is available for you to use and uh, leave comments there as well. So uh, that's secure sharing. Great, so those are the three big news. Uh, those are the three big things. The last, the, the something else that yeah. I'll add in there. Um, the one more thing. The one more thing. That's what I, that's what I was looking for, yeah. Uh, so uh, we're constantly making updates to our, to our Premiere app as well. Um, so I, I already mentioned how range-based comments are coming into the app. Um, the other piece that you'll see in the latest update is the ability to now download uh, low-res proxies. So mm -hmm. as you know, when you upload an asset to Frame.io, we automatically generate a set of H.264 proxies uh, based on, on the original source file. Uh, in the past, in our Premiere app, you could only download the original, mm -hmm. which if you're on a bad connection, uh, that can take a really long time until the media is available in your library and you can start bringing it into your sequence and start cutting it up, right? Um, in this latest update, you can just download the low-res proxies mm -hmm. that Frame.io already generates, bring them into your sequence, make your edit, and then when you're back on a you know, fiber connection uh, and are ready to download the original, you can download the original, uh, replace everything in your, in your sequence, render it, and upload it back into Frame.io and send it out for review. So for those remote distributed team workflows, uh, we think this will be a, a big part of, uh, of helping these teams um, just work more easily with the content that they already have in, in Frame.io. So that's one more one more thing that's out as uh, as of this release. Yeah, that's very smart actually because I mean we have a similar workflow with a remote editor, but it you know it's it's always complicated. Uh, so if it's integrated in a review tool like Frame.io, of course it makes it a lot easier if that tool generates the uh, proxy by itself. And yeah the guy on the other side can actually, doesn't have to download the 4K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the proxies are already being generated in Frame.io, so it was kind of putting uh, two and two together. And, and yeah, so now those proxies are available uh, in Premiere. Uh, if, if you're using the DaVinci Resolve integration, of course, they're already there. And uh, the, the originals actually download in the background and, and come in automatically, which is nice. So, mm. um, so yeah, lots of cool ways to, to leverage those uh, remote editor workflows and, and make the most of the proxies that are being generated in Frame.io. Nice. And when is 3.5 available? 3.5 is available now. So uh, range-based comments, uh, advanced search, those are available to all users. And then secure sharing is something that's in beta right now. So uh, people can, can reach out and get added to the beta list and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll kind of do a phased rollout uh, with that release. But um, yeah, that's, that's what's available. 
All right. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. Thanks for running me through. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D for more from IBC 2019. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks.